Hello, Bronte Sores and Airheads. Coming up on episode 26 of Sundays with Jane Eyre, A Voice Somewhere. We'll be talking about volume 3, chapters 9 and 10, or chapters 35 and 36 of the novel. And our co-host will be author Rowan Coleman, who writes the Bronte Sisters Mystery Series under the name Bella Ellis. Okay, our story so far in under four minutes. Young Jane has survived an abusive childhood at the hands of the Reed family in the Lowood School, where she was sent for being too rebellious. Her best friend at school, the saintly Helen Burns, dies at a very young age. When she turns 18, Jane is hired to be a governess at Thornfield to educate Mr. Rochester's ward, Adele. Jane is disappointed that Thornfield is not haunted, but she does hear a strange laugh coming from the attic. The housekeeper, Mrs. Fairfax, assures her it is just the servant, Grace Poole. Jane meets Mr. Rochester. He falls off his horse. He is fascinated by her watercolor paintings, and they begin to have intimate conversations about their in her lives. One night, a mysterious fire breaks out in his bedroom. Jane rescues Rochester by dousing the fire and him with water. And then they hold hands in his bedroom. The next day, Jane thinks Grace Poole tried to murder him. Friends of Rochester come to Thornfield for an extended holiday, including Blanche Ingram, whom everyone believes is going to marry Rochester. Jane continues her inner battle over her love for Rochester as she watches him interact with the insufferable Blanche. The mysterious Mr. Mason arrives in the West Indies and an old Romany woman arrives to tell the lady's fortunes. Jane hears her fortune, but it turns out that it was Rochester in disguise as the fortune teller all along. During the night, Jane is awakened by someone in the attic calling for help. Rochester brings Jane to the attic where she finds Mason wounded and bloody. Jane assumes that Grace Poole has tried to murder him. Jane is summoned back to her childhood home, Gateshead, by her dying Aunt Reed, and learns that her aunt had withheld from Jane a letter from an uncle wishing to make Jane the heir to his fortune, but Mrs. Reed told him that Jane was dead. Jane returns to Thornfield, and she and Rochester finally reveal their love for each other in the orchard at night. Jane utters the famous line, I am no bird and no net ensnares me, and there is kissing. Rochester proposes to Jane, or Jane proposes to Rochester. In any case, they agree to marry. A couple nights before the wedding, Jane has a nightmare and wakes to find a strange and scary woman in her bedroom who tears her wedding veil in half. Rochester tells her not to worry, but to be on the safe side, don't sleep in your your own bed the night before the wedding. The wedding happens, but when the clergyman asks if anyone knows of any impediments to the union, a lawyer, along with Mason, stops the ceremony with news that Rochester is already married to Mason's sister, Bertha. Rochester admits it and reveals that he has been keeping his mad wife locked up in the third floor of Thornfield with Grace Poole as her keeper. He takes them all to the room, wrestles with his wife, Bertha, and dares them all to judge him, for secretly keeping his mad wife locked up in a windowless room in the attic. Rochester finds Finally tells Jane the story of his loveless marriage to Bertha and her madness. Then he offers Jane to run away with him and be his mistress. Jane declines and secretly flees Thornfield. Jane wanders the moors and finally collapses of exhaustion at the door of the Rivers family, sisters Diana, Mary, and their intense parson brother, St. John. St. John sets up Jane as a teacher in the village school of Morton, his parish. Jane meets St. John's secret crush, rich girl Rosamond Oliver, and draws a portrait of Rosamond. St. John discovers Jane's identity and that she is his cousin. Everyone gets rich and... From their dead uncle's fortune, Jane now has a family. St. John asks Jane to be his help me fellow laborer and missionary's wife in that order and come with him to India. Jane is willing but not as his wife and scorns St. John's idea of love. In volume 3, chapters 9 and 10, St. John continues to pressure Jane to marry him and be a missionary, but just when Jane is about to succumb to him, she hears a voice somewhere calling to her. And she rushes off to Thornfield. You don't want to miss the next exciting episode of Sundays with Jane Eyre from the Rosenbach.